Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video, even though we are almost one week out of the 2024 Mr. Olympia, we are going to talk about some other guys who are not really related to the Mr. Olympia this year, maybe with the Mr. Olympia next year, but not this one. We're going to take a look at the off-season update of Regan Grimes, who just posted a physique update, this photo and another one. And what he says here in the caption is also very interesting. So he says, starting point for one more off-season phase before starting a prep for the 2025 shows. I have already picked the shows I want to do, but curious which shows do you guys think I should do? Current weight, 296 in the photo. Alright, so first of all, this is Regan Grimes before his off-season phase. What does this mean? Is he at the end of a cut? I wouldn't say so, I would say he's probably the end of like uh, health phase, I would guess so, because here he definitely looks a lot softer than he usually does, and he definitely gained some fat, some belly fat especially, and overall like, he, he's kind of chubby, like, he's definitely not in good condition, uh, he doesn't have that hardness that he usually has, he has the size, right, so 296, that, that's, that's pretty heavy, of course, it's far away from where he needs to be if he wants to be one of the top guys in the world, if he wants to really fulfill his uh, potential, but if he is off, if he has been off for a while here, and he maintained this much, uh, this, this weight, this much size, then I guess it's good, because he says this is the start of his off-season phase, so I'm pretty sure this is not the end of his cut phase, this is definitely, this has to be the end of his health phase. So, if we consider that, then yeah, this is decent, this is actually pretty good. Now, of course, we all want to see Regan get to like 340, 350 maybe even. He's a taller guy, he needs to get really heavy in the offseason. You guys know that Samson goes up to like 340 in the offseason, and you can say that he is even potentially like lacking size in certain body parts, especially compared to Hadi and Derek. So, if Regan wants to be taken seriously, he needs to get to that at least 330, 340, so he needs another 30 or 40 pounds on top of this, but once he starts, you know, doing the gear, he's gonna get leaner and harder, so if he truly pushes the offseason this time around, he can actually make solid progress, again, his next show is gonna be in 2025, next year, he chose the shows, and uh, as far as his question, what do we think, which shows he should do, well, I would say one of the spring shows, whichever shows are in spring, but not Arnold Classic, maybe he can jump to the Arnold Classic as well, but, I mean, there isn't really much of a reason for him to do that, because he won't win it, not this year, so if he did like a Vancouver Pro or Toronto Pro, if he starts the off-season right now, pushes the food, pushes the growth for the next three or four months, and then cuts down for the show, wins the show, qualifies for the Mr. Olympia, then he has enough time to push again, and then cut down again for the Mr. Olympia, but from what I heard from Milo Sharchev last year, I think the talk was that he's gonna do one of the shows later in the year, and try to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, like at one of the later shows, and just cruise with that conditioning and go to the, go to the Mr. Olympia, now, that's also a sound plan, I can see that working out as well, but I don't know, we'll see what he decided to do, I would like to see him on the Arnold Classic stage as well, I mean, I don't know, I don't think he can win, of course, but maybe if he progresses, if he really gets in crazy condition, maybe he can take one of the top spots, like this year we had uh, Samson Dower and Harry Chopin in the top two, Samson is planning on doing the Arnold Classic next year, maybe Nick Walker jumps in, maybe, Sam maybe Andrew Jack, uh, in that case, uh, Regan can potentially be third, best case scenario, Rafael Brandau was third this year, and Regan beat him before, now of course, Rafael made a lot of progress, more progress than Regan made, but Let's wait and see how much progress can Regan actually make in the next, in this next uh, push phase of his. Maybe he can actually progress enough and be able to be, you know, in the top three of the Iron Classic. That's also a possibility. But again, he won't be able to win it. He needs to qualify. So one of the shows before or after the Arnold, maybe like Detroit Pro, something like that. You know, a weaker show that he can actually win and qualify for the Mr. Olympia. We'll see. But I really hope he's actually going to push things this time around and actually, truly make progress, you know, improve improve significantly and show up actually much better 
I would love to see that happen and actually bring good conditioning. Do something like Rafael Brandau did. I mean, those guys are very similar. Both have beautiful structures. They are taller. They are aesthetic. They're just lacking size. Rafael brought up his size quite a bit. Regan came up as well, but I don't think he's on the level of size of Rafael Brandau. From the back, he's probably even better, but like from the front and from the side, he's still lacking a little bit of thickness. So if he gets a little bit bigger, let's say 7 to 10 pounds bigger... I can see him in the top 3 of the Iron Classic. What do you guys think? Alright, the next thing is, uh, well, really bad, really sad news. It's uh, Mike from the Trent Twins who uh, tore his pec, unfortunately. Horrible, horrible. When I saw this, I was like, that's it for me. That's gonna do it for me. I am never bench pressing again. I love the exercise. It's fun. It's really cool to see your strength go up on that exercise. You know, when you first bench press two plates and then three plates, and I didn't get to these kind of weights, not even close. Uh, I was doing three plates for reps, but that that's it for me. I don't even attempt one rep maxes. But this guy is bench pressing six freaking plates here, guys. Guys, that's crazy. That's like high-level powerlifting stuff. You know, he should, like, they compete in bodybuilding, but they should definitely compete in powerlifting with his strength. I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen now after this, but this is a bad pack tear, man. Like, with six plates on the bar, you know, you can't have a minor pack tear. If something tears, it's gonna go all, all the way. So, I mean, as far as their, his, Mike's, uh, bodybuilding career, I mean, maybe he can still do well. I don't know how well will that heal. There is a lot of bodybuilders with pack tears, like uh, Hunter Labrada, like um, today. I mean, Hunter Labrada, we have also Kevin Lebroni back in the day. I feel he had a smaller one. Like, you can get away with it in open bodybuilding. In classic, no way. You, can, you can't do anything in classic if you have a pack tear. Like, classic is all about aesthetics. If it is about freak factor, you can get away with it. But, like, you know, it's still a horrible thing. He won't be able to train for who knows how long. You know, it's like, I would be miserable if that happened to me. Like, it's my biggest fear, literally. I tore my adductor recently, and I wasn't able to train legs hard for a long time, and that sucked. That sucked bad. But this, you know, daring something on your upper body, and, you know, with chest, it's like, it's the part that's really important when it comes to having uh, symmetry and aesthetics. So, tearing a pack in the gym is literally the worst injury you can have, you know, as far as a bodybuilder. But, you know, he kind of asked for it. I mean, doing six plays for one rep max, wearing the elbow wraps or, or, or sleeves, you know, it's kind of asking for an injury to happen. So, I mean, he was probably aware of the potential risk. Like 90% of the pack injuries, pack tears are happening on a bench press. So he knew he was doing, I'm sure. But, you know, a lot of people get away without any kind of injuries on the bench press. So... Maybe he hoped it's not going to happen to him, but it happens. So, I mean, the message that you guys can get from this is stop bench pressing. I mean, it's good for ego, it's fun and all that, but if you're trying to bodybuild, it's definitely not the safest exercise. It's probably the most risky one out there. And uh, he posted this update, so he says there is no a lot of bruising. He doesn't know if it's a good or a bad thing. I mean, it, it should be a good thing because the, when tears happen, there is bruising, a lot of bruising, but... You know, the way that video looks, it looks like he tore that pack off the bone completely. It looks nasty, it looks really bad. So I don't know why there is no bruising, but yeah, this, this doesn't look naive. It looks uh, really bad. So it is what it is. If you guys are gonna bench press, just be aware of the risks. If you're willing to accept that risk, go ahead, have fun. But if you wanna be a bodybuilder, professional bodybuilder, competitive bodybuilder, I would definitely suggest to avoid this exercise. Alright, the next thing is related to this year's Mr. Olympia, a classic physique. We got a physique update from Wesley Vissers at around 10 days out of Mr. Olympia, and his conditioning looks good. Looks like he's almost ready. Now, you guys probably saw the interview where he said that he wants to be even more shredded than he was at the Arnold Classic, but in a recent uh, interview with Fuad Abiyad, his coach, Wesley's coach, Stefan Kinzel, said that his plan is to bring him exactly the same as he was at the Arnold Classic while maintaining his size and fullness. He also says that Wesley brought up his hamstrings and his glutes, so hopefully he's going to actually be better. And as far as conditioning, like, I, I was worried whether he is going to actually bring the conditioning he brought to the Arnold or not, because maybe that was a one-off. Like, that was the only time I saw him in that kind of condition. I didn't know if he's going to be able to repeat that. 
But, you know, with Stefan in his corner and him being so motivated this year, so driven, yeah, he, he's gonna do it. He's definitely gonna bring it. So as you can see right here, he's in very good condition. I would say a little bit flat, but still in very good shape. There is obviously some more work to be done, but then, you know, with the peaking process, dehydrating, carving up, doing all that, he's going to look amazing. He's going to be at his 100%. In my opinion, he's going to be top three for sure. Whether he's going to be able to beat Ramon this year or not, I'm not sure, to be honest. You guys know that he barely beat him in the Arnold Classic and Ramon wasn't 100% on. Uh, as far as beating Chris Bumstead, I don't see that happening, to be honest. I should probably make a prediction video for the Mr. Olympia Classic physique, but at this point, it will be probably very boring because... I really don't see something changing this year, Chris is going to end up on top again, and then it's Ramon and Wesley, and then Urs and Brian, that's the way I see it, if I see something more interesting and I decide to make a prediction video which is going to be more fun, I, I might do it, but as of right now, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's probably gonna be very boring, so... Uh, I'm not sure, the only thing that I'm not sure about that can be fun is uh, Wesley versus Ramon, that rematch. I'm not sure who's gonna place ahead of who. I know most of you guys think it's gonna be Wesley, but I don't know. I mean, Ramon is also extremely good, so it can go either way, honestly. Ramon has definitely less flaws than Wesley. He doesn't have as good of a structure, but less flaws for sure. And if he brings crazy fullness and conditioning, I'm not sure, guys. But it seems like Wesley is bringing it. Now, one guy that can potentially, you know, upset the top five and potentially crack it is this guy right here, Michael the Bull. Now, unfortunately for him, very unfortunately, there is no most muscular in classic physique because in this pose, this guy looks pretty much unbeatable. Like, he looks phenomenal. He looks crazy. His conditioning is looking really good this year. He looks really crispy. He doesn't have the best, like, thickness from the side and, like, from the back, he kind of looks flattish. So, the best case scenario for him would be to, like, uh, beat Brion if Brion really starts uh, fading this year because of his age. But then there is a whole bunch of other guys who he's gonna have to battle to beat them and, you know, place above them. So, it's gonna be very difficult to crack that top five. But I definitely can see this guy in the top ten. I mean, this most muscular is looking insane. It's one of the best most musculars in classic physique. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. See you soon. All the best, and bye-bye.